Greetings, my excellent friends. It is January. The transfer window is open. We have five matches to play. Freiburg, Leipzig, Anderlecht, Bayern Munich and Fenerbahce. That Bayern Munich game is going to determine the course of our season. And in preparation, I am desperately trying to work out where I need to strengthen this team that is in line with my Moneyball principles. There are some quality players out there with interest in joining this club, including, believe it or not, Hendrik, who is currently at Monaco in this universe. Joshua Kimmich at the age of 35 looks like he could be an incredibly versatile and brilliant addition, but my Moneyball rules are simple. We sign no one above the age of 25. We should also be looking for players with a minimum age of 20 with a couple of years of first team football under their belt. And that narrows our field quite considerably, especially when looking for our major problem position, goalkeeper. There's just not much to choose from out there right now. But you know what the strangest thing is? On paper, goalkeeper is by far our weakest position. We've got three and four star quality all over the pitch, except for between the sticks. However, Serna has actually been playing a blinder this season. He's played 23 matches, only conceded 24 goals, kept 10 clean sheets, an average rating above 7, and although he's prevented ever so slightly less of the goals than he would be expected to, he actually has the highest save percentage in the entire league. Admittedly, he does have the highest expected save percentage in the league as well, so we're clearly doing a pretty good job at keeping the quality of shots against us to a minimum. This, however, is not a time to overthink. We are two points behind Bayern Munich. If we can maintain our rampant form and beat Bayern as well, we'll be top of the Bundesliga at the end of this episode. And yes, the coach is class Cerner as a good Bundesliga player who has potential to become a leading Bundesliga player. He has all pros in his game and no cons, but there's one player out there in our price range who might well be able to make the difference. Luka Podlek is playing for Mainz. He has played 19 matches this season and conceded 32 goals. Six of those were against us. He isn't especially fond of big matches, which might be a concern, but he is consistent and his attributes are stronger than Cerner's pretty much every level. Now, of course, we tried to sign Luka Podlek in the summer transfer window. We got ever so close. We agreed a deal. He was ready to join, but Mainz were unable to find a replacement. We're not going to allow that to be a factor this time. I want him. They're not prepared to sell Podlek mid-season. This could be an issue. So we will remove that and exclude from the negotiation. Let's see how a £30 million offer goes down. From being unprepared to sell in mid-season, turns out actually they're absolutely fine too. Wonderful stuff. That will be 20 million of our 61 million pound transfer budget gone. It has recently been elevated by the sale of Alberto Larinaga to Aston Villa. I'm not expecting any more departures, but we've got Svenigsen wanted by a few clubs. Marquez wanted by Barcelona, Fred Werner Haast wanted on loan, Rafael Luis wanted by Everton, and Karim Adeyemi wanted by Everton as well. You know the rules of Moneyball by now. If I receive an offer above a player's market value, I have to sell no matter how good they are. And for Adeyemi, that is a terrifying thought. 23 goals and 9 assists in 24 appearances this season. £88 million pounds will mean he is gone. Good job then that I already have plenty of alternative options for Stuart Ward to choose from. And you know what? I cannot praise enough the job that this man is doing. He's come in to manage Borussia Dortmund for me with no previous managerial experience whatsoever. Stuart and my task now is simple. Keep these players happy and end the transfer window on top of the table. Here we go then. Podlak is even happy to come in as a backup long term. He knows he might not be the forever solution to our goalkeeping issue. £60,000 a week and a £2.4 million signing on fee for a player who will hopefully become our first choice goalkeeper for the remainder of this season. Of course, I have no control over that, so just watch Stuart Ward keep Cerner in place from now on. While I'm waiting for the next match, I've just had this news item pop up. Adrian Ortega, 
is reaching the end of his contract with Everton and could be a pretty good quality money ball signing. He has not quite reached the levels this season as he did last year, but he started 28 matches for Anthony Clark's Everton last season. Since Luis Enrique came in, he's only started eight matches. I know what he can do, though, and he is a more technical, physical player than Jaden Bunnell, for example. Also, not quite as versatile. I think on this occasion, I'm going to have to pass on a taser and scour the globe for some other potential money ball bargains, such as possibly Nicolas Casada, who is wanted by Chelsea and Tottenham and has a £56 million release clause. Okay, he is very good at keeping possession. Not bad for progressive passes. He wins possession a lot as well. If we compare him with Kylian Lado, who has been playing consistently this season, in that deep lying midfield role oh he's good he's he's very very good the question is can we get the money we're gonna need an extra t um, 20 million which we could get by selling quinton timber now timber is above the peak age range that i would be looking for normally i would have sold a 29 year old by now as the director of moneyball i just had so many players above the age of 30 to deal with when i came in in the summer i never got round to it so that is an option no interest yet though and i would need another player who is equally versatile because timber has played at right back in central defense and defensive midfield this season i am lacking right back cover so i would probably need another young right back pretty confident i've got enough options to cover in the center of defense though andrea garavaglia perhaps 25 to 35 million pounds wanted by stoke city a plus scouting rating unambitious though and doesn't look to further himself not good enough for me right i want every single scout on this and every single analyst find me a right back so I can buy my defensive midfielder. But while we wait for that right back, here is another example of the director of Moneyball's principles in action. I'm looking for undervalued players. I'm looking for cheap deals. And Ben Doak is joining us from Liverpool at the end of his contract for a grand total of zero pounds and he is top quality look at that an a rating as an excellent signing i am looking forward to him joining us in the summer that is for sure honestly it's like a sign i've just started scouting for a new right back and my best one is out injured for five to seven days and is going to miss our game against Freiburg. So no getting rid of Timber just yet. And to compound that potentially risky strategy here, Alf Ortel is moving to Feyenoord on loan. Only two star current ability. Three star potential though. Definitely need a replacement for Timber. Hang on. Who's this? Mikhail Kaminsky in Borussia Dortmund's under 19s, eh? Well, this is interesting consistent performer handles himself in a professional manner lack of strength and fitness he's only 17 though lacking determination which is one of the key attributes for me but you know what i'm thinking he could at least be a stopgap right we have an option here we have an option and in fact we've moved him to the senior squad let's start him training at a higher level straight away and what wonderful news this is Podlek is about to join Borussia Dortmund. We have another goalkeeper who might not be good enough for us long term, but is probably going to be a decent enough stopgap for the remainder of this season. What high praise that was. There we go. Let's ask Adiemi to welcome him and we will register him for the squad straight away. I wonder, will he jump straight into the team against Freiburg? We are pretty heavy favourites, and it is no wonder they are in dreadful form. One draw in their last five games. Stuart Ward is playing it cool over Luka Podlek. We believe in him, but how the future unfolds will tell us more. How enigmatic and elusive could you possibly be in a press conference when asked about how much confidence you have in a player? Will we see him in the team against Freiburg? Your guess is as good as mine. At this point, I have absolutely no idea. Oh, and Cerner's not making it easy. He's been the best trainer of the week. Just three hours after we kick off against Freiburg, 
Leipzig are going to be hosting Bayern. Can Leipzig do us a favour? That is a match I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on. Well, would you believe it? Arteza is going to join Bayern Munich as a squad player next season. Hmm. Rejected offers from Stuttgart and Barcelona, eh? Oh, I hope that doesn't come back to bite us next season. But lovely to see that Stuart Ward has now completed his intensive language course and can speak fluent German. Seriously, I'm on basic German. Why can't I go on an intensive language course? Here we are then, first match back after the winter break. Freiburg versus Borussia Dortmund, followed by RB Leipzig versus Bayern Munich. Come on, Stuart. Show us what you can do, my excellent friend. Well, Stroikens is injured and out for three to four weeks. We beat Freiburg 3-1 to go top of the Bundesliga. 61% possession, 2.76 XG, wow. Adiemi Salto and Duzdag all on the score sheet. And you know what? Our average ratings weren't that great given the XG and the scoreline. Lado playing as a roaming playmaker. He had a rough match, 6.3. Podlek was straight in as first choice number one. Man of the match performance from Duzdag. Stuart Ward pleased with Podlek's debut performance. And, and Leipzig did beat Bayern. Oh my gosh. We've gone top of the Bundesliga properly. Whoa! If we can keep this form up, if we can beat Bayern in three matches time, oh my word. And look who we've got next, goodness me. Stroikens is going to be out, so, oh gosh, I'd expect Rykov to be in. Adiemi to play on the wing. Oh my gosh, this is going to be an incredible match. No wonder it's on the telly. Offers flying in now for a variety of Dortmund players. First up, Danilo. Could still improve. He might become unsettled if he's not allowed to speak to Flamengo. But that offer is nowhere near the upper end of his market value. So if we are to sell him, I want a big chunk of money now to make sure that we've got the opportunity to bring in our right back and uh, defensive midfield combo. And Flamengo have said, yes, okay. So that's 17 and a half million guaranteed with a further 2.6 million if he plays 50 league matches for them and 30% of profit on the next sale. Moneyball in action. Mainz trying to lowball me with an offer for Svenigsen though. He has been a very reliable backup for Otzeltor this season. Eight starts, 14 substitute appearances, 7.05 rating, three assists, good stuff. And given we have a minimum fee release clause of 26 and a half million, I'm definitely not gonna sell him for seven and a half. Feyenoord want to loan Haast, but he's another player I want to keep around. Only started one match and seven substitute appearances, but he is going to be a quality for us. So no, we want to keep him around, thank you. So we have transfer listed Timber, we have offered him out, and every club feels that his wage demands are in excess of what they're prepared to pay. Let's see if we can sweeten the deal. And also drop his value a little bit. Mainz in again for Svenigsen. This could be dangerous. This offer is rapidly approaching the upper end of his market value despite that minimum fee release clause. So we'll reject this. We might need, though, to offer Svenigsen a new contract without that minimum fee release clause. That'll do nicely. Right, Danilo set to move to Flamengo. And with a little bit of shuffling around, that now gives us the money we need to make our offer for Nicolas Casada. Those wages would be absolutely feasible. Offer accepted. He wants to be a star player straight away. Well, yeah, I'm happy with that. And 120 £20,000 a week. Now, given that there's competition here from Chelsea and Tottenham, I'm actually going to go above and beyond that. 150k a week. He wants 155? Fine. Again, another director of Moneyball principle. You can overspend on wages as long as you're underspending on transfer fees. So it's over to Casada now to make his decision. Are Tottenham and Chelsea going to come in and potentially gazump and scupper this deal. Still no offers for Timber. Let's see if we can persuade Timber to find a new club. He is happy to do so. The fans are very much split on this upcoming Leipzig game. TM very positive about our chances. KV got a bad feeling. JA can see us beating Leipzig. HK please start Podletch. He's playing with confidence. AB Podletch shouldn't start this match. What will Stuart Ward do? I also must be honest. I'm slightly fascinated by these murmurs of discontent at Tottenham. 
fans are worried their team is on the verge of disaster. Five matches without a win for Zinedine Zidane's side. I wonder. So here we go. Borussia Dortmund versus RB Leipzig. If we win, we seriously put the pressure on Bayern to catch up. Come on, Stu. Oh, no. That is only the second match we have lost this season. In the league, that is. We've lost a few in the Champions League and the Cup. You know, you know what I mean. We were completely dominant in the second half. Look at that XG rising and rising and rising. Podlet not having the best of matches. <laughs> Lado and McNish not doing brilliantly in defensive midfield. Right, I think it's the right thing then to bring in Casada. We need someone to be a bit tighter in that defensive third. Wetzel's on the ball. So the Bosley, Huertas. Oh gosh, they're completely, completely leaving the striker unmarked there for, for their first goal. And uh, oh my goodness me, that's straight out of Anthony Clark's playbook there. Should have done much better with that. Just an easy ball straight over the top for Leipzig's second. Rykoff on the ball. Bernal to Wanna. Oh, beautifully played. Found himself in space. Good finish, but far too late. Frustratingly, that puts the ball very much back in Bayern's court. Well, bother. Bayern easily win away from home and go top again. Well, it was nice while it lasted. And I must remember, we're only expected by the board to reach the Champions League spots this season. Next season, we need to be the best of the rest. And I think we're very much on course to achieve that a year early, to be perfectly honest. Year three, work towards challenging for the Bundesliga title. If we can keep this up, we are challenging. Gosh, and Mainz are in again. For Svenigsen, would they just leave him alone? Excellent. Svenigsen signs his new contract. Hopefully that will put Mainz back in their box. Right, one match before that epic clash against Bayern Munich. We are playing Anderlecht away from home in the Champions League. An Anderlecht team who are in fantastic form, but we've got to fancy our chances. They are fourth in the Belgian Pro League. We are second in the Bundesliga, pushing Bayern hard. Ward certainly doesn't think the players are going to have a problem being motivated. And I am very much hoping that this game against Anderlecht will give us a bit of a morale boost. Confident, strong performance, easy victory, heading into that match against Bayern Munich. No pressure, Stuart. Oh, wasn't as easy as it could have been. 1-0 victory. I mean, I say it wasn't that easy. We actually pinned Anderlecht back pretty significantly there. 89% of our passes completed, 67% of the ball. Nine shots on target. Sterner back in goal. Oh, interesting. Looks like there's some competition for the goalkeeper jersey. Aspiensen as an advanced playmaker out on the right wing. Interesting. Didn't perform brilliantly. Oh dear, very quiet match for Adeyemi. Given how much he's overperformed his XG this season, bit of a concern. Paul Wanner, man of the match performance and scoring the only goal. It's that man again. Bernal got the ball on the edge of the box, played it to Wanner, and what a wallop that was. Cracking goal. Deserved winner for Borussia Dortmund. Uh-oh. Right. That changes plans then. Um, Marquez is out injured for two weeks. And I've been offering out Quinton Timber, who now I really don't want to let go just before we play Bayern Munich. Because he's the one who's probably coming in to replace him. Here is some wonderful news ahead of the Bayern game, though. The deal for Nicolas Casada can be completed. He will join us as our best defensive midfielder there he is Aspiensen now developing some concerns and I've no idea why because he's not even competing for the same position Aspiensen though probably decided yeah I don't need to talk to the boss about that after all loan offers made now for Quinton Timber which I'm gonna reject if he's gonna leave I want some money although Ingolstadt no I want some money now thank you very much right recruitment meeting as we approach deadline day transfer list Svenigsen as we can't afford his wages utterly ridiculous I think my business is done apart from potentially selling timber and getting in a new right back hmm well the right back search is not going brilliantly 227 million no that's out of my price range might be a quiet deadline day Bayern, of course, favourites for the big match. We're playing away from home. But if we beat them, we go top of the league. No pressure. The board and supporters both expecting a draw here. It's a real six-pointer. Games don't come much bigger. 
yeah, winning would be great, but we're away from home. I can't expect it. That's not going to stop us from watching this match live, though. Bayern lining up with a 4-2-3-1. As do Borussia Dortmund. Rykov up front. Saltor on the right and Svenigsen in on the left. So Timber does not make it into the team. Leverkusen won. They are now level on points with Bayern Munich. So... That's an added complication. We have to get three points here today. Come on, boys. Right. Lado on the ball. Svenigsen. Oh, no. The ball breaks to Bayern far too quickly. It's only the third minute. But Lado to Bernal. Plays in Rykov. Come on. Oh, a weak finish. Very weak finish. But that is a good early sign. However, Bayern back on the ball. And it comes to nothing. Bernal steals it away. Svenigsen to Casada, who is starting straight away, not long after joining the club. Nice ticky tacka style here, playing out from the back, seeing Stuart Ward's team in action. Saltor loses the ball, though, to Bayern. Vieira on the ball. Saltor gets it, gets it to Svenigsen. Casada, oh my god, what on earth are we doing there? Just trying to head the ball around in the middle of the park. This is an extended highlight, and I don't think it's going to end well. Camavinga off the bar. Oh, my goodness me. Somehow does Doug manage to clear the ball away? Eight minutes in. This is going to be a tricky game, I can tell. Right, Vieira floats a free kick in. Rogan manages to clear it, but the ball is headed back across. And it bounces out. So let's take an advantage of the pause in play to see what's happened here. Oh, goodness me. Right, Duzdag has unfortunately picked up an injury very early and needed to be replaced by Gabriel Germain. So Saltor's playing on the right. Svenigsen as an advanced left wing back. Casada playing deep in defensive midfield alongside Lado, Bernal, Adeyemi, Wanna, and Rykov up front so far doesn't feel like it but we've actually had the higher xg lower possession though 100 percent of tackles won 59 percent of headers won and we are pressing hard 4.4 opposition passes per defensive action or opopadar as i like to call it let's keep that opopadar high pavard on the ball for bayern munich takes a shot and podlex somehow manages to keep that out that looked like he'd carried it over the goal line my word, this is going to be a stressful afternoon. 34 minutes in and we have not created a huge amount. Not much created at all before half time and that is it. So half time, we have kept Bayern Munich at bay. Now, Oppopadar has drifted somewhat, but Podlek, good signing. He's our best player so far. You can see by this heat map. Much of the Dortmund play happening in our own penalty box. Much of the Bayern Munich play happening in midfield. So that is something that I would expect Stuart Ward to have to deal with at half time. As things stand, we would drop to third place. We're flying high ahead of Leipzig. Definitely a three-way race for the title at the moment. But just imagine... If we pick up three points against Bayern, we'll have played Leverkusen, we'll have played Leipzig, we will have played Bayern. Surely then it's plain sailing for the rest of the season. Come on, boys. I believe in you. I know that you can do this. A little more play in the centre of midfield and we have the momentum in this second half. Oh, this is great. This is very, very good to see. But then it's a Bayern free kick from deep. We clear it out, but it only goes to the Bayern player. We're not making much of an effort to break. We are sitting deep. Stuart Ward not taking too many chances. It feels like he's really playing for a draw here. Oh, Kamavinga on the edge of the box. Musiala, round. Oh, free header for... Oh, my goodness me. Podlek did brilliantly to keep out that first effort, but Musiala pounced on the rebound. It's 1-0 to Bayern. Oh, that's hard to take. The ball floated across. Fantastic. Just point blank save from Podlek, but could only parry it to Musiala. And now defender on the line couldn't manage to keep it out either. We're really struggling to get the momentum in this game. And it looks like Bayern are on top again now. Something has to change here. And this could be our opportunity. It looks like Bayern have picked up an injury after making all five of their substitutions. Ten minutes remaining. Bayern are down to ten men. Can we get a goal? Oh, come on. We have the ball. Svenigsen takes the throw in. 
plays it to Rogan. Jaman, Rogan, Svenigsen, Aspiensen plays it to Makoku. Turns inside back to Rogan. Svenigsen. So stressful. Rogan to Quesada. Plays it to Makoko. Lado picks up the ball and plays it through to Eddie Yemi. Who scores? We have equalised. And don't tell me it's offside. No, 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 no. Do not disallow that goal. Do not disallow that goal. Come on, that had to be onside. That was a good goal. Yes, yes, it was. What a ball from Killian Lado. What a finish from Karim Adeyemi. We could get a winner here. Come on, one more highlight. Six minutes of added time. Oh my word, what a match this has been so far. We let Bayern through though, Musiala. Just hold it. Oh, do not allow them. No, it's a straight over the top of the bar from Bayern. Right, come on, six minutes of added time. One more chance, Dortmund. One more chance. Time is running out. Time has run out. Oh my word, what a stressful end to the game that was. We took advantage of... Bayern going down to 10 men. Lado playing as a Segundo Volante had a great game. Adeyemi played well too. Saltor, torrid time at right back. Musiala did the business for Bayern. But all in all, we have to be happy with that. Given how free scoring both teams have been so far this season, one all draw slightly unexpected. You can see how much play Bayern had in the middle of the park there. You can see how much we regained territorially in the second half. Harsh injury for Duzdag though. He's out for three weeks. Rykov out for five to seven days. And that point keeps us in contention. We are one point behind Leverkusen. We are two points behind Bayern Munich. We are 10 points clear of Leipzig in fourth place. Tottenham lost 2-0 to Liverpool. That is now seven games in the Premier League without a win. I genuinely think my transfer business is done. So although we still have a few days left of the transfer window, I say we come back at the end of April because that match against Bayer Leverkusen will probably decide where we finish in the Bundesliga this season.